good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Marco Mayo. Uh, I'm very grateful for your invitation, like from Ernesto from Metropolitan Plan University in Tirana. Uh, uh, we will share today some thoughts about the architecture and uh, mainly about the light in architecture and how this light is shaping the, the buildings and the spaces. Um, this is like a short journey uh, that started uh, 15 years ago when I moved to Czech Republic. I'm originally from uh, Portugal, from Guarda City. Uh, and since that I moved to Czech Republic, uh, the almost I would say that the conflict on me started uh, because the, the gap of light between Czech Republic and Portugal is quite um, substantial. Uh, it's like about uh, two rough ideas, like a thousand a uh, thousand of uh, uh, hours uh, per year uh, between Lisbon and, and Prague, the, the difference. So this, this gap and mist of the, the light made me go further in the, in the way of processing the, the thoughts about space and about how this perception of the space uh, with the light makes us to be more aware uh, of the design process and how the light is influencing so much our living. Uh, as Ernesto was, was mentioning, uh, like I've been working in the Czech Republic for, for a while, in total 15 years at the moment, uh, from the different practices. I've been in few offices in Czech Republic. I've been working for Škoda Auto as well, as it was mentioned before. And nowadays, I have my office, Marco Mayo Architects in, in Prague, and we are focused uh, developing our own uh, designs, uh, just not the, the interiors uh, themselves, but also like uh, other uh, interesting projects that are that they go from buildings, residential buildings to landscape architecture. So it's, it's a pleasure uh, today to be here with you. I will share with, uh, with you some of, uh, let's say, I would say projects that happened during this process of the last 15 years with me. I chose four of them uh, that somehow they merged some of the, the thoughts and the process that happened during the time that I've been here working here in the, in the Czech. Uh, so if you allow me, I will just share with you my, my screen and the, and the presentation. Um, just give me uh, a little bit of time to do that and I will share it now. Yes. Yes, now, yes. Thank yes. you. Yes, perfect, perfect. Um, so the, the, the lecture or say the, the talk that uh, we have here today is about um, shaping the light and the architectural space defined by the light. Um, the, the main idea, like when we think about light, uh, I would, let's say, uh, ask you to compare these two images, the image that is in the left and the image that is in the right. Uh, we are talking about the primitive light. Um, it's like almost a joke to, to ask you to do that. But basically, we, like I'm saying that this is the same space in the left and in the right. The tricky thing and, is that in the left space, you cannot have the light there. So you are not able to see Stefan's cave uh, because missing of this primitive light. And, uh, and it's just like um, a kind of introduction uh, to say like how important is the presence of the light in the space. Without the light, we don't have the perception of the space. Without the interference of the, this primitive light, there is no even any kind of emotion, you, don't, you basically don't see it. So the gap of light uh, makes you understand that there is no perception of the space. We can continue with, with the natural light. And that is like, again, the, the left image uh, from the, the Pantenon and the, the, the right image from the Pantenon as well. Um, and basically the difference in these two images is the gap of the light again. Uh, they are the same, let's say, is the same space. The, the trouble is that we cannot see it because the, the gap of the light is evident and you cannot perceive the space. You cannot perceive the pantera because there is a gap of uh, natural light. We can speak also about artificial light. 
and the artificial light is something that you bring to the space yourself or uh, that you create, you provocate. But without that that moment, that is the, the, the specific uh, moment of uh, uh, artificial light, you cannot create the aurea, the, the moment of uh, perceiving the, the other next to you, as we can see here in this in this paint from uh, Saint Joseph, the carpenter. Other idea about like about the feeling of the light. As well, this feeling of the light is the perception like how this light even has a movement, how the light can move in the space. Uh, in the Le Corbusier chapel, who had the chance to visit uh, and stay there like some time, you can like feel how this light is changing, how this uh, feeling of uh, the space is, um, it has a movement that change the space itself. Uh, um, if there is no light, and this is the left image, you can see that uh, there is no perception of the space, the, the space at all. Uh, the symbolic light also like uh, used as, um, as as a graphic almost uh, of defining the the space. It, the, the light itself is it just communicate. Uh, the symbolic, the the, the symbol in the, in the church of Tadawando, um, almost you don't need too much to have the perception that you are inside of the church, that you have like a kind of symbol that represents that space. Uh, and then we can combine, of course, like the architecture and the, the light and the primitive light and how to shape the, the spaces. And you have the perception that this light is so important to you and to the space that uh, without that light, there is no perception of the textures. There is no perception of the, of the space itself. Um, uh, we, we could be here like for a, a long time, but I would uh, just like share with you some of the thoughts about these light aspects and uh, the, the study of the light. Uh, we know like from the morning to the evening how this light is like changing, uh, just not our daily life, but our like say reaction to, to the daily work, how we wake up in the in this bright and uh, um, let's say soft light until the evening when we come uh, home or to 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 some place that is a warm light and is the sunset. But the perception uh, that uh, like uh, consciously we, we we are not con consciously consciously we are not like uh, aware it's just happening during during the day. Um, but it's like it's, there is a movement, there is a changing of the color, there is like a lot of aspects uh, changing. Uh, during the day that also influence our life, just not like architectural life as, as we understand, but let's say the space that um, that where we live or where we work uh, or that we share with with our friends. Uh, so like there are like few things that I would like just to drop on the, on the table as a, as a thought to have perception about about this geographic location. Because depending on the geography, also like the sun, it has just like a different, um, let's say, influence in the in the space, uh, meaning that the latitude and the sunlight, how how these it has a big influence from the north to center to south, and, and each almost I don't want to say country, but each place has a different, uh, let's say, relation with 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 the light and with the sunlight. Other thing is about orientation, how we are like orientating our buildings or our spaces to have conscience about that. And then which type of light are we using? Which type of light we want to use in, in, our, in our spaces? Are we like allowing that the natural light is coming to our spaces? Are we allowing to, to work just with artificial light? Uh, together with that, of course, they like the size and the proportion of the light, how much we want, how much intensity, how much um, need we have, in fact, and to be conscious that it's not just, just not like, let's bring the light. No, there is a kind of proportion of light that we should be conscious about being be bringing to our spaces. Then the materials and the materials, because they reflect, they react. To they, 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 they create a kind of game with the, with the light. So the, they basically like they are the ones that 
bring us almost the emotions because the light allows allows that and how light hits or emits in the surface uh, and here we are already talking about the, the, the reflections the the the, the, the colors the, the intensity so to be aware like how all these surfaces are like reacting to to our lights other thing of course is like to understand like in which place we are and if we like speak about like center of Europe where where we are now, we can speak about this north light that is like homogeneous and a little bit let's say weak, and it's like calm and it creates like quiet environment. So we are like when we make an opening in the north, we are conscious about the space that we are creating, or the southern light that is the opposite that is a strong and direct light uh, with attention and drama in the environment. So it's very important to understand like how we are like facing our spaces, how we are positioning our spaces. And then of course there is the east light, uh, the, the one that is clear, that is white, is like connected with the sunrise that you woke up and almost your body also is waking up with, with the light itself. And the west light that is intense, that is warm, and is associated with with sunset and the twilight in the in the evening. So all these, let's say, different let's say characters of uh, uh, positioning our spaces are very very important according to the geography. Other thing that are like two two important factors is like to understand that there is like the natural light, but also the diffuse light. Sometimes we work with a solid natural light and this solid natural light brings us like some clear boundaries between the zones of the light and the shadow and the contrast. On the other hand, the diffused light is much more homogeneous, it's subtle separation between the light and shadow zone. So it's very important to understand if we want to create limits or not with using the light. Other aspect, of course, is the natural light and artificial light. Uh, how to one how one can balance the other like the artificial light is it has to be all the time adapted to the architecture you is like it's stagnant it it has to be um thoughtful to 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 control the the space as we want the natural light is much more difficult i would say because like uh, almost like we are adjusting the architecture to to adapt to the natural light but also the light is already spontan spontaneous and unpredictable. If now it's like a uh, sun, but in like 10 minutes it will be cloudy, all this natural light also changes your space. So the natural light, mutable and artificial light, static, complement each other on the plane and the fundamental role of characterization of the space. Influencing, of course, the perception of the use and appropriation of the space. All this is, has an effect in the interaction of light with the user and the environment. Um, by, I would say like is a phrase, by considering uh, this light in the design architects, usually they turn to design the, like a feature or to use to create a variety of spatial perceptions, meaning that the, the light allows us to see spaces and measure the time. And this is a very, very important thing that uh, we as humans, we have as a gift from the light. Yeah, we, we know when to wake up, we know when to rest. Um, I could be here talking about light, but all our, let's say, um, colleagues uh, from the past, uh, uh, our, let's say, mentors, our um, inspiration, like as a Frank Lloyd Wright or Le Corbusier or Tado Ando, uh, all of them, they speak about that. Uh, there is nothing new on, on this topic, I would say. It's, it's just a matter of being uh, aware, uh, all of us, that um, we should, like say, consider the light as the, as the main, I'm saying like all the time, the main material to work with, uh, with the space. Uh, so there are like just a few phrases or sentences from, uh, the, let's say, these great architects. And all of them, basically, like the light is the main element in the works that they create. Uh, related to that, uh, I would like just to leave this phrase or sentence that the light, in fact, is the material in the construction of the space. Is the light that, in fact, 
design the space. It's the light that define the space. So it's really important, like in the from the sketch to the to the end, to have to be conscious that this light can influence the the perception of our projects. And I want to go like through now four projects that I, I did during the last um, in the last years here here in Prague. I would start with this uh, kindergarten that I, I started in 2010, the, the draft. Um, it's a process already with 10 years uh, because it's a school that is growing by, by the time. Uh, but it was very interesting even for me that like 10 years ago, like my perception of, of the light and the, the space was changing uh, by the practice itself. So in that time, in 2012, it was necessary to, to build um uh building can, can you see my mouse in the on the screen yes it's clear yes. thank you yeah, yes perfect so all this is the is the area that we were working working for the for the school and we start the kindergarten here in the back of this main building but it was necessary to extend the kindergarten for a second classroom and the main uh, question in that time from my friend and uh, at that time also client Juan, uh, he asked me like to define like two classrooms for 50 children and that would have like more four or five teachers uh, with additional playground uh, to be aware as well about the noise because there's like a main road coming in front of, of the school um, and uh, to work of course with these visual relations and the tricky thing was in that time, because uh, there was a stress on that, we would have just like 10 months to do the project, and the, the, the construction, because of the scheduling of the, of, of, the, of the classes and of the school. So we basically, we start to, to draft the, the school from the, the place, but also the relation of the, the volumes with the light, basically. So the extension was clear that we need to duplicate the, the capacity to a new volume that should somehow reflect to the environment. And for me, the environment was basically done by the light from the sunset, from the sunrise to the south, to the sunset, and how people should arrive to the building and how the building should be related with the playground. So a few weeks uh, was uh, we had to, to draft, to sketch, to make a kind of, uh, let's say, settlement of, of the concept uh, that would help us to, to drive the next steps very fast to achieve, let's say, the construction as soon as possible due to the, the process. Uh, so some parts is about, let's say, how to duplicate this capacity of, of the spaces. And other parts, of course, is about like all these proportions and to keep them um, um, let's say balanced and is very important like we are talking about children small children that all of them they feel let's say well in the in the, in the kindergarten and then how to relate it with the, with the landscape and with the future development of the school uh, for that reason like uh, we we implement the the process that uh, basically like i was coming to the site almost every day and uh, working on the site with with the colleagues to to provide them the, the solutions and the, the, the design solutions that we could achieve as soon as possible. Yeah, just not like the main volumetry, but also like the main spaces of the school. For that reason, like you can see here already, like the extension of, of this school, how it was defined and the design. Yeah, there is like a main ramp that helps to access to the school. The, the curve part is like just reacting to the, to the landscape, but also to the, to the sunrise. So in the morning, this facade basically is bringing the light inside of the of the welcoming area to the kindergarten, and then like all these volume is like organized according to the playground outside and with the trees that they were already presented there, but also planned to have like a large terrace with the future extension of the sport facility. For that reason, like we create like this volume is a is a I would say a little bit playful volume with windows that are like welcoming you in the morning with, with the sunrise. Uh, but also they are visible in the evening as a welcoming, let's say, area, because when the parents are coming in the evening to pick up the children, they have the same, let's say, character of the facade. 
Uh, in other hand, like or in the other side of the building, we created the playground, and we can see here like the windows that also have interference in the inside from the sun, sun sunrise to the sunset, and uh, there is like kind of nice game uh, of the of the light going inside of of the classroom, and the rest like we work with uh, sometimes with horizontal windows or panoramic windows or like big glass. Uh, parts that allowed the children to be connected with the exterior space. So basically, we are connecting visually and through, let's say, the, the light, the exterior with the interior. The second project that I would like to share with you is a little bit uh, later, uh, is the White Society. And I would say that is the project that makes me really think about the artificial light and how to balance the, the space with the artificial light. So the Wine Society is a project that was done in around 2015 for a client here in Prague. And the, the main question or the main let's say, subject that he brought to me was like, Marco, I, I would like to, like from this room that is connected with the street, I would like to make like a welcoming room for my Wine Society here in Prague. Yeah, as you can see, like it looks almost as an office uh, room uh, that is, uh, we could create like a reception for an office. But how to transform this space to a um, to a wine bar, to a wine club? So he asked me if I could, let's say, transform this to welcome people because it's like it's open to the street. Uh, and I asked him if we could work, of course, with the light because. and this could attract them to come inside. Yeah, for that reason, like we, we, we start to, to think what to do with that. It was about like a reception area. Uh, he asked me if we could bring like a kind of chandelier, like a main ceiling light, uh, but we have just like five meters by four meters of space to work with. I propose him that I would like to create the light, in fact, not to buy just like a standard, uh, light, but we could, in fact, design the light. For that reason, I propose to create like a welcoming, let's say, light ceiling uh, using the bottles of the wine um, and to almost to cover all the space with with the light. Uh, for that reason, like my estimation was to to buy two thousand bottles of of light of uh, of wine bottles. And from that, start to work to modulate the shape of, of the ceiling to create like this welcoming chandelier. So by the time and by the design, I understood that I need a lot of effort and a lot of work to be done because if uh, there would be 2,000 bottles in this, in this room, I would need uh, 10 step, uh, nine steps for each bottle, meaning that I need, I was calculating one minute and a half for, for each bottle. So I would need like 18,000 steps, what means for me five days of installation, 24 hours. For that reason, like I, I need to find a solution. And the solution was like to bring a friends that would help me. And I create like a group, a Facebook group. And I invite all my friends to help me to do this installation. So I could reduce the five days, 24 hours in two days, that should be the weekend for the installation. For that reason, like we paint all the room in black just to have the contrast for the light. And we start the installation like from the center um, of the space with the help of a lot of friends. They were coming during the, the weekend and we start slowly the installation of the light. And you can see here was the, the result of, of that. So it was like a process of three days of installing 2,000 bottles on that ceiling that basically gives you this aspect that is like a, a, a waving. We call it like the, the, the Portuguese waves in, in, in Prague. And we create like this ceiling to welcome the people to the space. You can see it already here. So we transform the white room in the black room because the light then they, it can do the contrast. In that room, we design also the furniture, the indirect light, the LEDs, and everything somehow start to have a balance. Connected with that, also we design the the lower part 
of the, the wine society. So it's like a cellar. And in this cellar, uh, also we brought like artificial light to create like a nice environment to taste the wines in the ground floor or underground floor of this wine society. So this is the project of, of wine society, just few images to, to share with you the feeling of, of that space. Other project that uh, also is like uh, quite interesting for me is like the Limpid Works. And the Limpid Works is a concept uh, that comes from a friend that uh, it was necessary to, to create a kind of, um, yeah, we call it like Limpid Works. Limpid, it means like clean, poor, and uh, works like how to work with that. So basically like how to work with our body in, in the space uh, by dancing, by performing, by doing uh, sport activity, by interacting with, uh, with other uh, people, how to work on that. For that reason, we got this space. It's like it's, it was an office building. Um, and um, due to the space itself, and you can feel here like how colorful it is, how intense the colors they were there, we start to try to understand how we can play with such a difficult space to create a kind of limpid and poor and uh, homogeneous space. For that reason, like we received like a kind of inputs that uh, in the in the main rooms there should be created the, the studios, and in the other rooms like they would be more for the changing of the clothes for the uh, the, the some offices, but mainly. What matters in the end was like how to create these main rooms where like 20 people, they could practice uh, different activities connected with these limpid works activities. For that reason, like the space was given like 430 square meters of space. We would need to create like four studios plus two offices with a reception, with the gardens, plus the cock rooms and some bath uh, facility. And we had like more or less six months of project and construction to go ahead. Uh, so the concept that we, we draft was, let's say, OK, let's try to organize the space that people could come here and they feel good basically by just being here. And, uh, and the idea was to work with, uh, let's say, we know that the, the natural light was like going through the day through the main windows of, of that space. I don't want that the light is changing all the time, the environment. We, 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 we thought to create like a shelter inside, but still the shelter should be a, a shelter of light. So we mixed the natural light with artificial light to create, let's say, a kind, a kind of power and controlled lighted space. For that reason, like we, we tried to find a way how to redo this in the in the easiest or fast way. So we involved again a lot of, let's say, our friends um, to, to help us with, with that. We decided we want to, um, to have, let's say, a kind of membrane, a kind of textile that should involve all that spaces. Just as a, as a detail, in that, in that time, like the, the best person that I know working with textiles was my mom in, in Portugal. So I invite my mom to come to Prague to help us to design like uh, and to create all these textiles for these limpid works. You can see her here doing three days. She was doing the curtains for this space. Uh, and here you can see like friends in the carpentry workshop to make it possible that we could achieve uh, all, let's say, these six months of work and create a space. Here you can see already the space, how we change it from this green and blue and the dark colors, we brought like light colors. We work with the oak material because it is very warm and welcome you very friendly. And the spaces that they were very dark and very depressed, I would say, with these dark colors, we brought, let's say, these, let's say, curtains and a membrane that would involve you in the space. As well in the, in the clock rooms, we, we found the same principles. We, we designed very light uh, furniture. We combined it as well with the, with the textiles. Even there are no doors, 
the, 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 the curtains are doing this scenographic uh, thing of dividing the, the spaces. And, uh, and basically, like, you are very welcomed to, to, to the space and your body just reflects that, that environment. Here you can see already like the balance of the artificial light around the space and coming to the, to the curtains and how the, how the natural light is controlled by this membrane. <clears throat> so in one hand, we have like normal walls that are like uh, wrapped by, by these curtains and the textiles. Uh, it's almost like a cloth that you have for your body when you practice um, uh, activity. Uh, the last project that I would like to share with you is, uh, is a chapel. is uh, is uh, in the same school that I started working uh, 10 years ago or in 2010, 12. So after some time, uh, like in the same school, was necessary to, to design a chapel. And uh, the space that we got was the, the roof, the, the attic space. And uh, But from here, from this image, what you can see is that the light uh, was trying <laughs> I uh, said, so like the white, the light was already trying to come to the space. So basically, uh, the what we did was like try to understand how much light we want to bring to the chapel, how much light should interfere with the space, and how this light should interact with your body. So for that reason, like we got, let's say, the, the task: how to create a chapel that should be for 50, 60, 60 children. Uh, in the chapel, there are like two main staircases and two accesses, plus one elevator coming to the chapel because it's part of the main core of the school. Uh, how to organize all these, let's say, different uh, spaces and uh, the furniture itself. And we had like two months, in fact, of work because are the, the, the holiday period of the school. So when the school closed in June, we knew that we have July and August to implement the ideas that we draft during the months before. So we jumped to the, to the construction with the principle that basically let's try to find how we can open that roof to bring the light inside. The, the main, let's say, work was like how to work with these two access to the chapel and to enter in the chapel. That is the connection to the elevator. And from the sunrise to the south to the sunset, how to control all that light in the roof should be, let's say, really well controlled uh, so that people feel all the time comfortable over there. For that reason, like um, the sketch or the research about, about the shape was based in the, in the light, was based how natural and artificial light they should merge in the, in the same space. And if there is no artificial light, how the natural light can be enough? Or if there is not uh, enough natural light, how the artificial light can balance the space? So we, we sketch, we, we went through the process. Even during the construction, it was like a kind of research uh, time. And we start to open the roof to create skylights, to create, a, let's say, moments of light. And even in the end, we decided that we want to design our light that should be above the altar in the end. So just not the, the, the natural light by the skylights, but also the artificial light. We try to create all that uh, so that in the end, we could, let's say, achieve our, our let's say, intention of, of the, the light. Here you can see already the, the, the space. So we transform, let's say, this dark, uh, roof attic in, the, in a kind of bright and light space. There are like some nice moments, I would say, that happen during the process. Uh, this is the main access to entering the chapel. Uh, the chapel is dedicated to Saint Rita. So we just positioned Saint Rita in a kind of little altar of light in the end of, of the chapel. We create like the altar in the right side because the left should be a kind of walking zone and access to the staircase that comes to the other floors down or to the door or to the elevator to the other side. So it, it, it had like a kind of axis defined. The skylights that are in this part are open from the north side. 
So this light is very stable. It's not changing the space during the during the day. And in the south part, there are no skylights at all because the one that the light is interfering with the space. We make just some windows inside of the let's say the bottom of the altar, and the the light that comes inside of the the altar is the natural light from two windows, one in east and one in south, that creates a very intense moment of light. Uh, the cross that you can see here in the in the bottom is basically like cut it out from the dry walls, and there is no glass, and there is no light. It's just the light comes through the cut out, and it has like two faces because it's facing the two entrance of the chapel. In the other side, like you can see here, like how the space is very uh, quiet. And in some moments we can see, let's say, the, the light that is coming to, to the space by, by the morning light when you come to the chapel. Uh, from other side, you can see already the, the cross that is cut it out, plus the altar and the, the, the light that we were like designing to have to be above the altar. Here you can see like other perspective of, of the skylights, the other light or skylight. But you can feel like it's a kind of homogeneous uh, space in the overall chapel. Um, what I would like just to show you is like how this artificial light study uh, happened in the chapel, because basically like we can have different environments according to, let's say, the celebration that we have there. So here you can see like how the spotlights and the and these moments are like facing down and creates like a kind of uh, ring of light around the chapel. Easily we can change that just facing other source of spotlights facing up the, the space. So you get like a dark space around and you just light the, the above part. Or you can have just the skylights. So the skylights also they can have their own source of artificial light where, where during the day you have the natural light coming there. Or you can combine it having the skylights and the spotlights and you have like this type of environment. Additionally, there is like the altar light. So if you want just to focus in the altar, also it's possible. So all this flexibility is very interesting because you from the same space, almost you are creating different spaces. Yeah. And you have like a completely different perception of the space just by doing the changing of this artificial light or natural light. This was my presentation about the light, about artificial light and uh, natural light. Uh, I want to say thank you. And I'm now available if you have some questions or some thoughts about uh, shaping the light and uh, how architecture is like um, reflecting the just not the natural door or the artificial light. At last. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Marco.